Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. In this episode, we venture out to Bartlett Lake, Arizona on a solo paddleboard adventure with my pup Shayla. And along the way, I'll share great gear and equipment tips that'll help you have a better experience on your adventures in the outdoors. The next episode of Four Expedition Adventure starts now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I'm Scott Luthold. Today I'm coming to you from Bartlett Lake, Arizona, which is a really beautiful canyon style lake right near my hometown of Carefree, Arizona. I decided to come out here, it's mid-May. I usually come out here in, in March when it's a lot cooler and there's a lot fewer people. I didn't end up being able to do that in March, so I came out here, it's mid-May. It actually happens to be Memorial Day weekend, and so it's really busy over on the other side of the lake. But I came out here with my Subaru Outback, I brought my pup out here, I loaded up my boat bug slinger stand-up paddle board with all my gear, and I paddled over to the eastern side of the lake. And when you paddle over to the eastern side of the lake, you leave all of the people, because there's no roads, there's no communities, there's nothing over here for about, I'd say about uh, 30 miles going east, there's nothing but a mountain range, then there's one highway, and then you got maybe another 60 to 80 miles of more open wilderness. So when you cross over this lake, you're pretty much uh, surrounded by wilderness. There's very few people out here on this side. You will have some bass fishermen in the early morning, but other than that, that's about it. I got over here to this side, not a soul over here. I found a really nice camp spot to set up, a lot of tall grass. It's uh, just a really beautiful spot to camp. Beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset, and it's just a really extraordinary place to camp. The weather's been pretty nice. It's uh, probably about 88, 89, 90 during the day. And then at night it drops down into the 60s right now. It's just, uh, uh, usually in May, we uh, it, can, it can vary. We can have 110 or we can have 70 degrees. It's uh, kind of uh, what I call a swing month. Uh, it turns out that um, we've only had one or two hot days in May here. And I thought, okay, well, you know, if it's not gonna be that hot during the day, I can go out there and do my paddle boarding. I've got my um, 50 sunblock shirt on here and my cowboy hat, and I wear those things to keep the sun off me and paddled all the way across the lake to the other side. And I put my dog on and she's been on paddle board trips with me many, many times. Uh, she's 16 years old now, so she doesn't do much else with me. She doesn't go um, hiking or backpacking with me. She'll do a little car camping with me and I'll take her on my paddle board trips because she doesn't really have to do much. But uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing this episode with you. It's got a lot of Great information to share with you and some beautiful scenery. If you're not a subscriber to the Forks Fishing channel, I encourage you to become one. Of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you'd like to support Forks Expedition, go to forkspedition.com and go to the store. We've got a lot of great products in there you can buy. Or you can go to patreon.com slash Expedition. Your support goes a long way to creating quality content to this channel. I really look forward to sharing this episode with you. So sit back and enjoy the ride.
Well, I finally made it all the way across the lake. It's pretty busy out there right now. I had a lot of wakes to cross over. You always have to make sure you're totally perpendicular to the wake. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of gear on here. I've got a dog that's not strapped in. She's kind of loose. Sometimes she gets a little nervous. She'll get up and start moving around. And if you're in a pretty big wake, um, it, it can be kind of a little bit daunting because it's a, a very busy lake this time of the year. But I did get across the lake on the other side, and one of the remarkable things is that this year, this lake is totally full. And uh, if you watch my channel at all and you saw my other video of paddling on Bartlett Lake in the past, you'll see that the water level was very, very low, and right now it's very high. And so it's going to be interesting to find a spot to camp because the, just the rough and rugged desert just drops right down to the water here instead of having a little bit of um, rocky beach that I normally have to camp on. But there's some beautiful coves here that usually aren't here because the water level's so low. And of course, when the water level's low, it's, it's actually not as pretty because you might have 100 feet of just white uh, gravelly rock going up until you get to the crown of the lake where we are right now at this level and uh, you start to see desert. But Beautiful time to be out here, and I'm really excited to be out here. So I'm going to go find a good spot to camp. Gotta watch out for the cacti there. If you wanna puncture your inflatable paddleboard. You want to get out? <laughs> you want to get off the boat? Huh? So the only thing about camping out here in the desert is that you have to be really careful that you don't walk into cactus and get cactus spines in your leg because that does not feel good. Everything in the desert has thorns. So you have to be careful, everything. Like this right here, this is just covered in sharp thorns. That mesquite is covered in sharp thorns. Boy, I sure hope they don't play that Oompa Loompa music all night long. I might have to blast some Veruca salt at them. So this is all packed down here 
I wouldn't doubt that, and I've seen a lot of scat around here, I wouldn't doubt this is where coyotes den. So we're basically just sleeping right in a coyote's den. And I wouldn't doubt that they'll come around sometime tonight. Let's see what's over here on the other side. Wow, look at this view. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I've fought off coyotes before. I've been walking on golf courses with dogs off leash at night and uh, two coyotes started running at my dog, started chasing after her, trying to grab her hind legs. And I literally chased after the coyotes and scared them off. And then another time I was walking across that same golf course at night and I was with somebody and we had two dogs and we're walking along and it's pretty dark out. I got a headlamp on and I look ahead of me and just kind of squint my eyes. I look, my, look ahead of me and there's a coyote right in the middle of the, the walkway that we're on. And I think that's kind of weird, pretty close. And I look over to my right and boom, there's two coyotes over there. I look over to my left, there's another coyote. And I'm like, uh oh, I look behind me and there's two coyotes behind me. And we were, so the two dogs and, and this uh, friend of mine and I, we were totally surrounded by coyotes. And literally, I just started screaming and jumping at, each, at, you know, at them all and stomping my feet and scaring them off. And uh, I told my friend, run up the hill to, um, to the street and uh, take the dogs. And I came up behind her, but that was pretty crazy. That was pretty crazy. I mean, we were literally surrounded by a pack of coyotes in the dark in a very pretty tight circumference around us. Pretty gnarly. That's pretty much all she does. She lays there and sometimes she'll get up and just saunter around and sniff and she eats chicken. That's pretty much all she does with her life. Put this tarp down for a number of reasons, but out here I'm putting it down because this tall grass actually has some pretty pokey stuff on the ends of it and it's getting like in my shoes like crazy. If I put that tarp down, I won't have any of that poking up through the bottom of the tent. Gosh, I hate these little pickers from the dry, tall grasses. Getting into everything. Got them pretty much everywhere in my tech amphibians. These are Solomon tech amphibians. I've talked about these in the past, long ago. These are the best water shoes you could possibly get. One of the things I really love about them is the fact that they're also a clog. So if I undo this here, Let's see. You can undo the strap back here. See that strap? You can pop your foot out and you can take all the pickers out of your socks. <laughs> Probably shouldn't even have socks on, but anyhow, what you can see here is that this heel lays down and it's actually padded right here. And um, you can use it as just a clog. So you can slide your feet right in and have more pickers poke you in the feet and cause you lots of pain. So it's really cool and convenient. But uh, I've used these, I've actually backpacked the Nepali coast of Kauai with these babies on. 
Now I wouldn't probably do it anymore um, because my ankles are kind of messed up, but they have a really nice tread on them. They're um, meshed on the side. They've got a good arch support. They can be used for a water shoe or a hiking shoe. And I have definitely used these. This is my second pair. I've definitely used these for both backpacking um, and, and water sports. I mean, I don't really recommend them for a long, uh, long range backpack trip, but hey, Nepali coast, I didn't want to have to carry water shoes and wear hiking boots. So I wore these and um, back when my ankles were actually doing pretty well, these things do a, a really great job. So Solomon Tech Amphibians, check them out. So I'm going to show you something else. See that? Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, there you go. You know what that is? Yep, that's a cactus thorn needle. It's in my uh, ankle, or it's in my uh, calf pretty good. See when I pull on it, it's actually got a barbed end on it. What happens is these are, these are actually hollow and dry and the tips are super thin. And what happens is when you uh, get one of these lodged in your leg, the tip actually curls and becomes like a barb. So when I pull on this, watch this. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pupper's already went to bed. That uh, sitting there on the paddle board for about two miles of paddling was more than enough for her today. So, <laughs> so she already went to bed. I brought part of her bed with me. So she's got her bed in the tent. I was able to fit all my stuff and part of her doggy bed in my dry bags. I've got two 35 liter dry bags that I bring along and um, in one of them I put all my sleeping gear and my sleep system, my tent and all that and then the other one I put food and kitchen and and clothing and things like that. So I think I'll make a little bit of dinner right now. I brought my little titanium stove and titanium cook pot and I have some diced ham and some soup I think I'll have that and I have some crackers and chips and I brought a couple beers because hey when you're paddle boarding you can carry lots of stuff and especially the paddle board that I've got you probably saw earlier I've actually got a five gallon bucket cooler it's made by boat b-o-t-e the same company that makes my paddle board but I strap that right to my paddle board I'm able to sit on it and keep ice and cold food and drinks and things in there and if the paddle board were happen to tip over the cooler would not go down because it's actually cinched down with strong straps to um, some side hooks on the side of the paddle board. And then my dry bags are actually strapped down really well as well. And the only thing that would happen is if I tipped over, the dog and I would both go in the water. I have a life jacket belt that goes around my waist. I'll show you that tomorrow morning. Uh, the dog, on the other hand, uh, I do not have a life jacket for. However, uh, that's because when she was younger, she was very agile and she could swim no problem. Now she's getting older. If I bring her on things like this, I really should have brought a, a doggy uh, life jacket for her. And I'll probably, if I bring her on any more excursions, I'll put her in a doggy life jacket. Go boy. That should stoke up pretty quickly. Got myself a, um, my favorite beer, Orange Blossom. It's made by Papago. Ought to fit up my belly. I like having this cooler along as well because it makes for a nice little table. I'm sitting up on a chair, but which is causing me to have to hunch way over in order to be able to get my soup. But I could sit on the floor and, or excuse me, sit, sit on the ground and wrap my legs around this cooler and have it pretty much be up to almost my chest. And I could eat out of uh, this bowl much easier. So I wanted to show you this JBL backpacking speaker that I have. I really love this thing. It's waterproof. Um, it has this 
carabiner on here so you can actually hang it from your backpack or from a tree branch or whatever. It's got really amazing base uh, by JBL and it's Bluetooth and um, easily rechargeable with a solar panel. I can't really use it when I'm filming because as most of you know, my entire channel is filmed with an iPhone and I only brought my iPhone and my music is on my iPhone. So I either have to listen to music or I have to do my filming. So right now I'm doing my filming, but as soon as I stop this particular segment, I'm probably gonna spend some time listening to music. But uh, it's, it's a really nice product. Look at that giant saguaro. What's really interesting, and you can't see this, but I can, but with my headlamp, all of the eyeballs of the spiders flicker and glow. And all the way at the very top of one of those saguaro arms on the left, there's actually a little spider. And I can see it all the way from here because his eyes are glowing. So walk around out here, you know, this isn't like a campsite. This is just a flat area out in the desert along Bartlett Lake. And I'm trying to tread lightly on it as much as I possibly can. But, you know, you do have to kind of keep your eye open because this is definitely snake season. And there's a very good possibility that a snake could slither its way right through my camp. And when I say snake, I mean rattlesnake. And when I say rattlesnake, I mean like eight, nine foot long, eight foot long rattlesnake. And, uh, you know, don't really want one of those guys cur curling up next to me in the bed. I will say this though, I've camped out on the ground without a tent before. And I've woken up in the morning and lifted up my, my bed and found myself sleeping with scorpions who had made themselves totally comfortable and cozy underneath my sleeping pad. So, you know, don't think I'll do that tonight, but I don't know if you can see the puppers in here. Oh, there's the puppers. She's sleeping right there inside the bed. She's taking about three quarters of the width of the tent. But hey, she's old and she deserves all the tent she can get. The dog's taking up most of the tent. She's sleeping horizontally and I don't wanna move her because she's sleeping. And I'd rather stay that way through the night. This is a uh, two person Big Agnes Fly Creek 2 ultralight backpacking tent. And I've used this many, many times on my backpacking trips and on some of my, actually all of my stand up paddleboard trips. So it's really a decent little tent, but it is little. I don't have the sides pulled out today. I didn't, um, I didn't use any cinch lines on the outside, the guy lines to uh, tighten it up on the out on the sides here, but it's certainly big enough for me and the pup. It's gonna be a nice night's sleep. Oompa Loompa music has stopped. Pretty much all I can hear now are crickets and a little bit of water lapping up on the shore. Should be a good night's sleep. It's actually pretty nice out. It's pretty warm. Just have the screen here, no fly over the top. I'm not expecting any rain. Should be a beautiful night's sleep. Anyhow, we'll see you in the morning. Good night.
good morning everybody had a actually pretty nice night's sleep it did get a little chilly out had to cover up the pup with uh with my down jacket <clears throat> she seems to have slept pretty well looks like she's waking up now just made myself a bowl of cereal and a nice hot cup of coffee just watching the sun come up there's a lot of bass fishermen out this morning so uh, i've had a couple of them just trolling right along the shore here and uh you know bass fishermen get going really early so there were already people talking right along the shore here probably around five o'clock in the morning so it was a pretty early morning for me even though i went to bed around 11. But the stars were out bright and didn't see any critters no javelina this area is probably jam-packed full of javelina Javelina, coyote, mountain lion, bobcats, maybe bighorn sheep sometimes uh, you see around here. Um, raccoons, squirrels, hundreds of different kinds of birds. I'll probably pack up fairly early this morning and start heading back because I don't want to be out here paddling across the lake when it gets super busy. Also. Um, it's, it's actually expected to be about 90 degrees today, so I'll, it'll be getting a little warm. I do have my 50, um, 50 sunblock shirt on here. I wear this all the time when I'm paddle boarding. It's got a really nice hood that goes up over your head and protects you from the sun. 50 sunblock. Somebody's thirsty. Come here. Come here. Come here, baby. Oh, you like that. You like that. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're so cute. So when you're a 16-year-old dog, you pretty much get to eat anything you want. I do give her some healthy grain-free kibble but um, out here I did bring some kibble along she probably won't eat it she's not a real big kibble eater pretty much the only thing she'll eat nowadays other than a little kibble is chicken she loves rotisserie chicken so she gets a lot of that and I pretty much give her whatever she wants as far as food because she just uh, she's up there in age and she's just happier when I give her a chicken so so last night I was telling you all that I had a really nice life jacket belt pack and this is it here it's called the onyx m16 and uh, it's pretty cool it actually just goes around your waist has a clip here and an adjustable it just goes around your waist in the front and then you take this pull cord and you you point it down and when you put it around your waist it just sits there like this and um, Inside here, there's a CO2 cartridge. And so when you pull this, it actually penetrates that CO2 cartridge and this whole thing springs open and becomes an entire life jacket. You put it over your head and it's actually got the, the mouth valve also to keep it inflated. So it's um, pretty nice. It's <clears throat> very convenient, very simple to use. You put it around your waist like this. And you just leave it there like that. And you don't have to carry another life jacket for yourself. And it stays out of the way. It's not cumbersome like most life jackets. So I use this most of the time. I've had this for quite a while. You do have to check it every once in a while to make sure the CO2 cartridge is all, everything's still good inside because you don't want to be out in a hazardous situation and pull on that cord and nothing opens. But uh, you just check it every once in a while, inspect it, make sure everything looks good and you're good to go. So I also wanted to share with you the fact that I've got a Spot Gen 3 here. I just got this device. I learned about this on my Boundary Waters canoe trip with my friend Dave Wirtz um, and Dana Wangren. Uh, Dave Wirtz actually had one of these and he sent a message to his wife when we were up there in the Boundary Waters. We were completely off grid. We had no cell coverage or anything. And he sent a little message button. He pushed this little button and he sent a message to his wife saying he was okay. So I asked him about it and he told me all about it. <clears throat> so I picked one of these up a couple weeks ago because I wanted to make sure that my partner Amy and my son Colin 
knew that I was okay when I was off grid out in the middle of nowhere and I had no cell coverage to send them a message. <clears throat> the way this works is you go on uh, their website, you create an account and they have different membership options. And basically, uh, I think I'm paying something like 15 bucks a month, but to me it's actually worth it because I want everybody to know I'm okay if I'm off grid and it definitely gives my partner peace of mind. But the way this works is you go on their website and you create your account and there's different messages that you can put into their website. And then there's an, also an SOS button and then there's another kind of rescue button here. And you log into the website and you say, okay, uh, under the okay button, I'm okay. You can put your own personal message in there about being okay. And then you can set recipients for that message. So I put my girlfriend and I put, uh, I put my partner Amy and I put my son Colin in there. And when I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, I turn this thing on and I hit that okay button and the lights up here blink and the light down here blinks and it's, they keep blinking. And when this light stops blinking, you know the message has been sent. And what it does is it connects to a satellite. The satellite connects to the website and says, okay, he hit this button, send out this message to the recipients that he's got set there. So my partner, Amy and Colin, then will receive a message on their phones saying I'm okay and show my location. Then on the other side here, there's a comment uh, button. <clears throat> and I've got that one set to a couple of my guy friends, which basically says, hey guys, I found a really cool camp spot and here it is. And it pinpoints my location for them. And if they're gonna meet me out on a weekend to go camping, they'll, they'll be able to find me even if I'm off grid and I don't have cell coverage or, what, or whatever. I do have um, my Bofang radio. So if I am expecting somebody to come out and meet me when I'm overlanding, I will turn on my radio and I put an extended antenna on there and they have extended antennas on their radios and we get about two miles of, of coverage. And so I'll leave that radio on and if they're, if they're coming in, they can, uh, they can message me on the radio and I can ha actually help hone them in. But if for some reason that radio is not working or I don't necessarily have expectations that they're coming out, I can send them my location, they can still find me. This middle one is an upgrade, it's a tracker, and if you go on their website, you can pay a little extra, and what it does is it tracks your location uh, real, practically real time, and when you get back home, it'll show you the route that you took. Uh, I know there's other kinds of trackers out there, and I've got a tracker right here on my watch, but this one's kind of cool because it runs off a satellite. Then, you also have this SOS button. You cannot hit this SOS button unless you lift open this gasket here. And the reason that is, is because if you hit this SOS button, you better be damn sure that you're in an emergency situation because a helicopter is gonna come for you and you will have a 15 to $20,000 helicopter transportation bill. Then over here, there's another um, recovery tool. I think it's a third party, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'll probably put a comment down below in this video to explain what this one is because I don't quite remember, but I believe it has something to do with an additional membership and it's also a, um, uh, you know, a recovery system to recover, help you if you're in a situation like you have a flat tire or you're stuck or something like that. But uh, this thing's really great. It's waterproof. It's um, USB chargeable, so I can charge it with my solar panels. It's got this nice carabiner. It's very lightweight, and you can hang this on pretty much everything or anything that you want. And um, I used this for the first time last night to let Amy and Colin know that I was okay and where I'm located. And I'm sure that they will have peace of mind knowing I'm okay rather than worrying about uh, whether or not I'm off grid and I'm, and, and I'm safe and not know until I actually return back to um, somewhere where I have cell coverage. So really great product, Spot Gen 3. They also have a couple of other models that are uh, more expensive than this that have more features that have uh, finger texting capability, but I didn't go for that. I think I just, I just wanted the utilitarian feature of letting people know that I was okay. So uh, check it out. <laughs> this is my journal. And I was flipping through the pages. I really like when I go out on my adventures to flip back through the pages of my journal and just read some of the past experiences that I've had. Most of these journal entries um, were written during other episodes of this channel. What's really cool is this page right here, actually these two pages, because this talks about how I was going to lay out my YouTube channel. And um, I've actually incorporated most of this stuff now. But uh, here's an example of um, how I was planning on putting the 4 Expedition logo down in the corner as a pop-up and when it slides out it would say subscribe or pop out that says get notified and then here's actually an end screen image. So I was actually out on one of my adventures and planning all that out for my website.
says, I'm too old for this. I need to be in an assisted care home. All right, let's head out of here, shall we? One last check to make sure everything's good over here. Just matted down a little bit of grass. It's all dead. Didn't leave anything behind. All right, let's head out. Check this out. That is a dead saguaro cactus in the lake. You can see the arms. It just keeps going all the way up. It's probably 30, 40 feet long. And right below my feet here is one of the arms. There's the other arm, pretty cool. All right, we're gonna head back. Maybe do a little paddling through some of these little coves for a little bit. Looks like there's a sailboat over there. Somebody's moored off the shore there. Maybe I'll paddle past that. Say goodbye to our little camp spot. You'd hardly even know it was there. Island over here. Actually, a couple little islands. I could have camped on this island, but I decided not to because I thought it'd be too close to the other shore. I didn't want to hear all that ruckus going on. This is where this little excursion gets a little daunting because there's cabin cruisers and speedboats humming along this lake and I have to cross right over and there will be wake and I can't paddle fast enough to get across before a boat comes so you just got to paddle hard across this stuff get across so I wanted to show you guys something actually I want to show you the lake um, shore on the other side where I was I was talking about that mountain range. Let's see if I can show you. It's going to be pretty bright, I think, in the sun. But if you look out there, that entire mountain range and the mountain range beyond that is Mazatzals. And there is nothing out there except for if you cross over on one or two mountain ranges, you'll get to the Beeline Highway, which is 87. And then this goes south. The Bartlett Lake is actually part of the Verde River. And the Verde River starts in Perkinsville, Arizona, which is way up north, north of Prescott. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Forest Expedition Adventure. I really enjoyed taking you on this journey with me. Next week, I'll be embarking with the Ram 1500 on a long-range trip all the way up to Bozeman, Montana to meet up with Overland Explorer to have the Camp X slide-in camper installed in the back of the truck. 
Then I'll be spending a couple of days in Montana, tooling around, and then meandering my way back to Arizona, and I'll be taking you on that journey with me. So I really look forward to sharing that with you as well. If you haven't become a subscriber to the Forex Mission channel, I encourage you to become a subscriber. And of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you'd like to support Forex Expedition, go to forexpedition.com and go to the store. Got a lot of great products in there you can buy. And if you'd like to become a member, go to patreon.com slash forexpedition. Your support goes a long way to creating quality content for this channel. Until the next time, take care.